All right, uh, EJ Daigle here. Uh, today we'll talk a little bit about AGV navigation uh, using marker strips and micro, micro basic programming, or the micro basic script rather. All right, so first off, uh, navigation versus the marker strip. I think in a previous video we talked quite a bit about um, you know, tape position. So we talked about the sensor itself is set up kind of like this. And if all we do is look at tape position and my direction of travel is in this direction, then we know that a tape that hits the middle of the sensor is a zero. Tape that hits the extreme left of the sensor is gonna give me a negative 50. And tape that hits the extreme right of the sensor is gonna give me a positive 50. So this is my actual sensor with my direction of travel of the AGV in this direction. So depending on where that tape is hitting, I'm going to hit um, get different values. Uh, tape position, we define what we call the variable. So we're gonna call it tape position. I've also seen people call it tape pause or TP or something like that. And the way you're gonna get that integer value for tape position is by asking for it. Say get value underscore MGT. Very, very simple. Um, if you wanna build this week's uh, particular uh, lab off of the previous week recommendation maybe do a save as um, and you can build off of your existing code because we're still gonna have to navigate that gray strip you know the vehicle is still gonna navigate on this gray strip in this direction all right what we're gonna do different this week though is we're gonna use a couple of boolean uh, values I'm gonna call them marker left and marker right which is to say that I've got a a marker strip right here and this marker strip, in this particular case, as the vehicle comes around the corner, the marker strip is gonna be on the right-hand side of that sensor, right? So if I'm looking at where the sensor will be, the sensor will be right here and the AGV will be like here, right? Um, so it would be hitting the, the right-hand side. If I had a marker strip over here, it'd be hitting the left-hand side. Those are gonna be Boolean values. Boolean values mean they're gonna be true or false. So unlike the integer I will get off of tape position, the marker strip will just be true or false. I won't get a chance to, uh, you know, get a, where is it? I, it? Just is it there or is it not there? I'm gonna clear my, uh, my annotations here real quick and kind of show you what I mean here. All right, so in this particular case, I created a little tiny animation here. At time one, we'll call this time one where the vehicle's sitting right now. At time one, the tape position's gonna be zero. Why? Because it's right in the center. So the tape position is zero. I don't have a marker on the left. I don't have a marker on the right. So I'm gonna have false and false. If I go a little bit further, I click and you can see my vehicle moved up, right? It was here and now it's here. Uh, time two, this was time one, this is time two. Um, at time two, my tape position is still a zero. It's right here, right? Um, my, uh, my marker left, there is no marker left. There is no marker right. So I'm going to be false and false. If I hit it again, I've moved a little bit further. Now I'm up at what I would call time three. And at time three, one thing I've noticed now is I'm no longer in the center. If this is the center, oop, that's the center and that's the, the edge, right? Then maybe I'm halfway between the center and the edge if I kind of break it up into threes there. So I'm gonna call that plus 25. I've moved away from zero a little bit on my tape position. I'm now at plus 25. And if you remember what, what we do with stuff like that is we actually would say, oh, well, we're using a negative gain. Um, so we're going to go in the clockwise direction and we're going to try to kind of steer to correct for that, right? All stuff that we did in, the, in lab two, and I, I think you guys are pretty good at that. Uh, the big thing right now, though, is I still have a false marker left, a false marker right, nothing there. Time four, this is where time four will be now. At time four, I still am needing to steer, right? Because I'm still kind of... I'm still kind of off center, so I'm still gonna call this maybe a plus 25. And I give you guys some leeway. If I ever ask you for marker or tape position, um, really what I'm looking for is that you're in the ballpark, right? Um, I'm not gonna say, oh, that's 26 and you said 25. You know, I probably will say, I think it's 25. So I'm gonna say anything between, you know, 20 and 30, I'm gonna call a good answer on that. And I would tell you, the only people I've marked wrong on previous labs were people that maybe accidentally put negative 25 or they would call this 50 or something like that. Then you would definitely get it wrong because it's definitely not 50 and it's definitely not negative. Negative would be up here, right? And 50 would be really close to the edge. And it's not zero either, right? 
Um, so anyways, I'm plus 25, and I'm still no marker on either side. Now, the next one's where it's going to get interesting. Ready? So notice right now at my sensor, I just have one red dot, and that red dot signifies tape position. When I go to the next spot, which is going to be time 5, you're going to see now I still have my red dot, and now I'd say my red dot is in the middle for my marker, or for my uh, tape position, right? So my tape position is back at a zero. I feel pretty good about that. I don't have a left-hand marker, so this is still going to be false. But you can see I do have a right-hand marker. You can see the green light turned on, the green LED turned on. I can see the blue marker strip, um, you know, the gray navigation strip and the blue marker strip now. And because of that, I now know that my marker right should be true. All right, this is what you need to, to understand to start to do some decision making based upon marker strips. It's one thing to have the AGV just track around and drive around all day long and do nothing. Um, that's important because we do need it to navigate, right? Um, but we also want it to be able to stop and a marker strip could signify a pickup location. It could signify a stopping location it could signify a place where we want the AGV to speed up. So for example, if I've got two areas in my factory and then I've got maybe a transit lane in between those two areas, it may not be necessary to drive as slow because maybe it's only a place where the AGVs go. So I might speed up. So a specific marker strip might tell me to speed up. A specific marker strip might tell me to stop and wait for something to happen. Another marker strip might tell me to go and uh, you know navigate to the right hand fork if uh, maybe my battery's low or if I've done five complete loops or something like that. So there's a number of things that those marker strips can be used for and you just need to, it's up to you to determine what they're really gonna be used for. I always kinda, when I look at these these uh, these commands for get value, I always think of this as, as T as the tape position, you know, is the way I think about it. And then I think about this as a marker and and, what the one and two really signify is a left-hand marker, right? And a right-hand marker. So if you're wondering um, down here, you know, mark, well, actually I got it written here, marker left and marker right. So marker left is actually underscore MGM comma one. And then this one is gonna be underscore MGM comma two for marker right. All right, so let's take a look at a couple examples here. So here's an example where I've got an AGV. Um, it's acting as a tug, and there's lots of applications for AGVs. A tug is something that's going to pull, uh, basically kind of like a, like a train engine. It's going to pull things around. Um, it could also, uh, an AGV could also be a, a pallet jack. You know, you could have an auto-guided auto pallet jack that's an AGV. Um, you could have a tug that's an AGV. We've got lots of these little lifting mechanisms that will move totes and move shelves around. Um, I don't have a real good term for those. And they even have auto-guided forklifts now as well that could actually go pick up a pallet and deliver it somewhere else. Um, what I like about this particular picture is you'll see the magnetic strip here. I cannot see, but I'm gonna guess somewhere up here somewhere, there's gonna be a, a, a marker strip next to a mag strip, and it's gonna tell the AGV to stop. And that might be the location at which this um, this trolley is going to offload its pallet onto this uh, onto this fixture here for some reason. Um, I'll give you another example here, probably one of my favorite ones. Um, I actually did this on the uh, on the intro video. Talked about the uh, the weasel. I absolutely love the weasel. Weasel's a really cool little AGV. Picks up totes and drives them around. What's interesting about this one is you'll see that this this strip here actually navigates to the right or it goes straight ahead. And that's gonna be based upon, they're not using necessarily marker strips. They've got a little, a little code right here that tells it what, what's happening. So maybe this is serial number, whatever number this is, maybe it's a QR code, maybe it is a, a reverse polarity strip. Um, but based upon if I get to this location and my battery is low, then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna hit the charging post. You can kind of see the copper strips that it pulls up on top of, and it will sit here and charge, and then it'll zoom back off. What's cool about this is look at the number of positions there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 and they keep going down. There could be as many as 12 or 15 or 16 AGVs. Uh, if you ever want to type in weasel AGV, they've got some really good video on, on these things, navigating, moving stuff around. Uh, really, really cool stuff. All right, so Micro Basic Lab 3, I don't know how my little robot here got off to the side here. Let me fix this real quick. I want my little robot up in the uh, upper right corner there. Um, so anyways, here's what we're gonna do for lab number three. This is gonna be a little more challenging. What I don't want you to do is get frustrated. It's intended to be fun, uh, but it's also intended to be challenging. So as an example, your AGV is gonna start in the same position it has always started, you know, right in line with this, this strip. It's gonna drive forward and it's gonna stop at the pickup location. It's gonna stop right away and it's gonna wait five seconds. We're gonna assume that a conveyor belt or something is dumping a tote on it, you know, call it what you will. It's picking up a shelf, I don't care. Then the AGV is gonna continue. It's gonna go all the way around this outside loop, okay? Um, this'll be its really its first time through. So we may need to increment a count or something either here or here to tell it's the first time through. Um, so we're not going to visit the charging station at this time. We're going to ignore the left marker strip and drive all the way to the next right marker strip, which is right here. This is going to be our drop off location. We're not going to physically drop anything off. The simulation doesn't allow us to do that, but we will simulate that by stopping at this location for five seconds. Once we're done with that, we're going to continue around the way and then we're going to go and pick up again. Okay, so we this was loop one. Now we're on loop two. We're gonna go all the way around. We're gonna stop for five seconds to drop off on loop two, right? So we did one, we did two. We did one, we did two. We're gonna go back up. We've got an empty AGV. We're gonna pick up for a third time. Stop, wait five seconds, pick up for a third time. Go all the way around and do a third drop off. Stop, wait five seconds, then go all the way around. Stop and wait five seconds, do a fourth pick up. Go all the way around, stop, wait five seconds, do a fourth drop off. Go all the way around, stop, pick up, do a fifth pick up. Now this is after five complete loops. So we've, we've started our fifth loop, but we haven't completed it yet. So we're gonna go all the way around, we're gonna do our fifth drop off. This is where it gets a little bit, I've, I've done a lab like this before with students and so where they say, well, do I stop after five? Do I stop after four and a half? Complete the fifth loop. Go all the way around, hit the pickup location again, pick up your sixth item, and I'm fine with that. Stop and wait five seconds, pick up your sixth item. We've completed five loops. At this point, this left marker strip, notice both of these were on the right side, right? They're both on the inside, which is the right side of the AGV. This left marker strip should trigger something making your vehicle turn and reacquire another strip and then stop here. This is where I want your vehicle to stop and it's gonna wait 10 seconds. Now I realize you do have a load on board, right? So there's a load on board, I'm fine with that because what's gonna happen is after 10 seconds, we're gonna assume you're charged up and then you're gonna go back this way and you're gonna drop off your sixth load and then the cycle will start all over again where I'm looking for five complete cycles and go around. I will tell you, I'm not gonna run this thing for an hour. You notice each each uh, cycle takes you know ten plus whatever it takes to get around. So if it takes twenty seconds, um, then it's going to take forever for me to watch this. So I'm not going to watch it run a hundred cycles. I'm going to watch for one uh, complete, including the charging cycle. So the five complete cycles of pick up and drop off, and then I want to see a charging cycle, and then I want to see it gets back around, and I want to see that it's it's kind of reset its data and it could continue on with what it's doing. Um, if you miss one of these, so take this in bite-sized pieces. Do not try to, you know, eat the elephant all at once. Get this to work. Get this to work. This will be the hardest part is getting to here, okay? If you don't get to there, I'm going to take two points away. So don't feel like it's the end of the world, um, but I want, I want to challenge you guys a little bit, and I want to make sure that you get that to work. Um, and then also the, the ability to reset the count after charging and all that stuff. So there may be a small deduction if you only got it to do pickups and drop-offs, um, but I do wanna challenge everybody to try to get all of the features of this particular map to work. All right, so actually this is kind of a neat little one. This is an, uh, an AGV uh, 
it's called DLS. It's, at least it's a Chinese or Japanese company. I can't remember. Um, but um, this is a little AGV pallet jack, kind of a funky little guy. And you can see how small these things get. And they, um, it's actually got uh, a little LIDAR on it right here. So if it comes in close proximity to somebody, it's going to stop. Um, really, really cool stuff. All right, but here, let's do this. Let's do some micro basic programming. I'm going to give you the, the initial code that I think you're going to need to get going. And then you guys are going to continue to develop that code as it goes. So we'll demonstrate a call to, uh, use, to a subroutine using marker strips. We'll stop and wait. And we'll talk about navigation paths, but I'm not going to give it to you. Remember that if you combine kind of what we did with lab one and lab two, I think you'll actually be able to figure out how to get to that charging station. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and open up. Uh, let's leave that open. I want to continue recording. And I can minimize that one. And go into my AGV sim. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, first and foremost, I, I'm giving you guys a, a new... Well, before I do that, let's pull up the profile. So I'm going to do this like we've never done it before. Uh, first thing you want to do is go into your configuration tree, select the bottom controller, all right, and then <clears throat> open up the AGV SIM profile. Now we got the right AGV. I feel pretty good about that. <clears throat> then you'll want to go online onto Canvas <coughs> and uh, get the new track. Uh, you can download the new track. It's actually called uh, Mag Loop Track New. So I've actually got a, a new track out there, Mag Loop Track New, that I want you to use. You'll know you have the right track because it'll look something like this. All right. Uh, where we have a right marker strip here, a right marker strip here, a left marker strip here, and a right marker strip here for charging. All right. Then I want to I want to start some new code is what I want to do. So we'll go in and start building some code. Um, we always start with option explicit. So some of the stuff we've, we've done several times. And I'm going to assume that we're just starting from scratch. You could take some of your, your pre-existing code, maybe do a save as and save it as lab three and now start editing and tweaking it. Um, sometimes it's easier just to, to start with, uh, with a blank template. I'm going to define, uh, actually, I'm going to put some program level comments. This is one of the things I'll be looking for is program level comments. Um, so I'm going to call this uh, uh, ENGR 2210 lab 003 AGV marker strips. You might put your name in there, uh, programmer, I'll put uh, EJ Daigle, and I might put the date or something like 4 slash 11 slash 2020. All right, now we can start actually coding. And this isn't going to be very much different than what we've done in the past. I'm going to start by defining my, my variables. So I'll define in memory tape detect. as a boolean now you can remember what we use tape detect for tape detect was if we don't detect tape i still want the agv to stop i'm still going to verify that i'm going to verify that your agv will not continue to navigate without tape underneath it that is a safety issue uh, then we're defining memory throttle we're going to give it a default throttle i think in the past we've done 400 or something uh, we need to get the tape position so we'll get the tape position as a, uh, as a, that's going to be as an integer as well, right? Okay, tape detect is, is there tape there? Is there not tape there? Throttle is a number. Tape position is a number. Remember what tape position is. It's going to be between negative 50 and positive 50. Um, we'll define in memory P error. We've done this in the past. Where uh, proportional error is, uh, you know, I really want my, uh, my tape position to be zero if it's not then that's my error. Um, we're going to define in memory my P gain, which we probably could have just used uh, standard values here. Um, but I will tell you, the proportional gain is important, right? In the, in the simulation, everything works great all the time, right? But in the real world, you have any wheel slippage, you have a, a load that's sitting kind of funky on it. Um, proportional gain will help us maintain our steering. 
which then actually would lead me to I probably need a steering integer. And I may determine that I don't need all of these. I'm just kind of coming up with these as I go. Um, and then I'll do a, a, a define in memory marker write. And boy, I also need a marker. Well, you know what? I won't do a marker left. I'm going to let you guys do a marker left. Marker write as Boolean. Because I'm not going to solve the whole problem for you today. You're probably going to need to add a, 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 a variable for marker left because you need to make a turn, a navigation based upon marker left. I'm only going to show you just a portion of it today is all I'm going to do. All right, so those are probably the all the variables I need. I got seven of them there. Uh, the next thing I will do is I'll set my throttle. I'll, I'll set in a default throttle, and I always like using 400. I think that's what we've used in the past. I'm going to set in a default gain, something I know has worked for my particular AGV, uh, both in the simulator and actually the AGV on the floor. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and, and define this as the top of our, our loop, of our main loop. And this is where we'll go to our subroutines. Uh, the first subroutine I want to go to is my update inputs. Same as what we've done in the past. Um, and I'm going to skip down a little bit here. And, and I maybe want to define what update inputs is. You know, what does that actually mean? So I'm going to call this update inputs because now I'm at the point where I'm thinking, I don't know what my next subroutine might be. So I'll call this update inputs with my colon here. So the, the main loop will be the, the top here. Uh, you can actually see it here, right? This is kind of my, I'll call this my main loop. Main loop. And maybe I'll even, uh, Maybe I'll even put, I know there's gonna be other items in here, but I'll put a weight in here of 100. And then this will be my, uh, oh, what do I wanna call that? My loop, my loop delay or 100 milliseconds between each loop. That's what I'll call it. And then uh, usually we do a go to top. So this will be my main loop, and I know I'm going to have more subroutines in here. I just don't know what they are, so I'm just going to I'm just going to kind of set those up because I know I've got one that I, I know what I want to do, but I know there's going to be more subroutines in here, right? So this is my main loop that's going to call these subroutines. So update inputs. Well, what do we want to do? We want to get the inputs that are the data that we're getting, right? So if I go back up here, I, I know what some of those are. Throttle's a, a set value. It's not an input. Tape detect is an input. Tape position is an input. Marker write is an input. All of those are inputs, right? So I'm going to say um, tape detect equals. And now I don't remember what the what the the thing was, but I can go back to my. I could either go back to my PowerPoint, um, or I could uh, I could go to the to the manual, and I can see I actually don't even have it on my PowerPoint. Um, for next time I'm going to put it in here right now I think it ought to be it might be nice to have tape detect in here as a value as well right so tape detect it looks very similar to the rest of these it's going to be get value um, and instead of MGT any guesses MGT was tape position really should have been MGP because tape detect is actually underscore MGD so I it is what it is I, I looked it up in the uh, well, I've used it enough, I don't even need to look it up anymore, but you can look it up in the Micro Basic script manual um, for uh, MGD, you'll, you'll find tape detect. All right, so tape detect is get value uh, MGD. So get value colon underscore MGD. And then I wanna get um, tape position. And that's going to equal get value we just looked at that a second ago, and I think I can still remember that as being uh, underscore MGT. And then we want uh, marker right. You guys will probably want to get a marker right at, left in there at some point too, but just follow along for right now. I think this will, if you do this with me um, and you look at this and you look at some of your previous labs, I think you'll, uh, you'll have the, uh, the means to kind of put all the pieces together. Um, so marker right. Marker right was underscore MGM two. 
All right, so this is going to be underscore MGM comma two. And then um, when we're done with update inputs, we always do a return command. And so basically, I go to my main loop. It calls the subroutine update inputs. Update inputs goes and gets those values. So that's where I'm going to start. All right. Then, just kind of looking at where I might want to go next. Um, our, I think the next thing we should do is we should follow the track. Uh, so I've got a subroutine that's called follow track. This is very similar to what we did in the last time. Follow track. Uh, colon. And for following track, um, essentially what we had was we had uh, P error. Uh, so we want to make sure we use the same syntax as we did up here. So I, I noticed something weird, P gain, I had a capital G. P error, I should have a capital E probably to kind of keep my syntax. And for that point, I probably should have marker right with a capital M. Try to <clears throat> try to keep the same syntax. It's going to make your your life a lot easier. So marker right here. Mind you, it'll tell you if you screw it up. It's going to say it's an undefined variable or something like that. And I'll want to fix my p error here as well. All right. So just make sure that if you've got a capital M for marker right, it's a capital M where you're calling it to. So p error. What we did was we set this equal to. And I'm just looking at my last one I wrote here. We had tape position uh, multiplied by the proportional gain and then divided that by a thousand and we did the divide by a thousand because we can only deal with integers and that was how we came up with our error and then uh, steering equals p error you know this is where I think I could probably almost get rid of p error I don't want to do that right now. We'll keep it the same. But when I say something like steering equals P error, at that point, I wonder why couldn't steering just equal this then? Because it seems kind of silly if I don't have something else updating steering, right? Um, and then I'll do a return here as well. And one of the things I do want to note, you'll see a lot of times, especially if you're using like a notepad plus plus or something, you'll see a lot of times things will get tabbed. Um, realize that the controller doesn't care. Um, the tabs can be helpful for, for human readability, um, but as far as the computer is concerned, it doesn't, it doesn't care about the tabs. It cares a lot about the, uh, um, the syntax though, capital letters versus lowercase letters and so on and so forth. All right. So all that is going to do is that's just going to give me the ability to follow the track. Um, I have not actually turned on any motors yet. Um, so I need to turn on the motors. I need to drive the motors. This is just going to give me the steering to, uh, to tell the motors which direction to go as, as I'm going. All right. So next thing, I, I guess if, if that's the case, then I probably need to drive the motors. Kind of defining this based upon what I'm as I'm speaking out loud what I'm going to call these different subroutines um, so this will be drive motors colon and this is where we do need to say okay we're going to drive the motors with the throttle and the steering so drive them at 400 speed steering according to the proportional error or if we don't have tape detect we're going to stop the motors remember that's a safety issue so I got to think, so if, if I have tape detect, I do this. If I don't have tape detect, I want everything zeroed out. So this is an important time to be thinking about that. So if, um, if tape detect equals true, then um, set command. So remember, get value was essentially reading an input set command is essentially triggering some sort of output is what it's so i'm gonna do underscore g if you remember this is how i get into uh, channel one which will be used as throttle i'm looking up there to make sure i make sure it was actually capitalized and set command uh underscore g comma two will be my steering so now i have both throttle and steering for when the tape is detected, 
you're going to guide based upon a 400 throttle and how much error there is from zero on the on the uh, navigation strip. That looks good. Else, if I don't have tape detect, meaning if tape detect is true, I do that. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set command and I'm going to go to underscore G uh, one and I'm going to make that a zero. And I'm going to set command and we'll go to underscore G two and I'm going to make that a zero. And then I'm going to do an indif statement. There, uh, there has to be a space in there. Right? That's one I, I constantly screw up on. Um, all right, and then I'll do a return statement at the bottom. So remember what this is. Is this to give me the ability to drive the motors? This is giving me the ability to come up with what the steering command is. The throttle command is going to be 400. So as long as there's tape detected, I will run at 400 speed according to whatever my proportional uh, error is, right? However, if I don't detect the tape detect, I'm going to zero out and stop the AGV altogether. So now, what do we have? Well, now we have the ability to drive this thing around and, and do what it should do. Um, I don't know if, I wonder if it might be worth testing it. Um, I wonder if I can build this or not. Yeah, I can build it. Let's see what happens real quick. Right now, I just have enough that I think I can follow around. Um, we'll find out. There we go. And you can see it's driving around. And I'm also meeting the linear speed of 0.2 meters per second. So that's going to be a requirement for this particular application. So as you build, you might want to get to a point where you test something out, right? And say, okay, yeah, you know, I'm back to where Lab 2 was right now. Lab 2 was the ability to drive around and get around in 20 seconds. The only difference is I didn't get around in 20 seconds. But for this week's lab, you don't, that's not a requirement. Uh, there's a requirement to maintain a speed of at least 0.2 meters per second, which I'm doing. All right, so let's zero that out and go back into my code. So now I've got drive motors. Now I need to do something with these marker strips. I need to determine if, if I detect a marker strip. So I'm just going to call it marker strips. Go sub. Uh, marker. What do I, it's, uh, oh yeah, I guess I'll do it. For some reason, I'm doing my subroutines with the lowercase first. I guess that's okay as long as I, I'm consistent here. Uh, go sub marker strips. And now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to create it down here, marker strips with a colon. And now this is where we're going to determine what we're going to do. All right. This is where we got to think. So what we're going to ask is, I'm only, for me, right now, I'm only doing the right-hand marker strip. I'm not doing a left. You guys are probably going to have to add a left to navigate to the charging station. But for me, I'm just going to do a right-hand marker strip. What I'm going to do is the result of marker right is either going to be true or false based upon whether or not this thing is over a marker strip, right? So when I, when I look at this, when it gets over a marker strip for that period of time, it's going to go true, right? Marker right is going to go true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a question then. I'm probably going to say something as simple as if, uh, and it's called marker right with a capital M, if marker right equals true, then I want to do something. And I probably want to stop, right? So it could be as simple as saying set command. And we, we have a stop command right here. If I don't get tape detect, I stop the motors, right? Well, could I do the same thing right here? If marker right is true, could I just stop the motors? Sure, I could. Right? Uh, yeah, I don't see any why not. And now let's say maybe at that point, um, I'm supposed to wait five seconds, I think is what it is. So I'll say wait 5,000. Um, then once I've waited 5,000, then maybe I'll set my, my motors back to the normal throttle and steering level. Set command, uh, throttle, and steering. And I also am going to, uh, it might be handy, now that I'm thinking about it, it might be handy to keep track of the, the number of times that you've hit a marker right strip. So maybe I will create another, I'm going to create another variable up here. I'm going to call it DIM 
marker write count as integer. I'll show you why. I think it, it might be handy to be able to say, okay, um, marker write, and I think I had a capital M, didn't it? Let me go back up and look. I just created it. You would think I'd remember. Yeah, capital M, capital R, capital C. Marker write count equals marker write count Uh, plus one so I could keep track of what that is and then I'll do an in diff uh, I always don't want to put that uh, space in there for some reason and then I need to do a return as well I'm gonna do one more command because I think this is gonna come in handy for you um, let's do one more subroutine I think I've used this before. Go sub, and we'll call this um, print debug. You could just call it print print variables or something. Maybe I'll even call it that. I'll call it print variables. Just remember, it's up to you what what you want to call that. Now I'm going to call that print uh, variables, and in print variables, I'm going to. Uh, call the print command and I want to know what that marker write count is so I'm going to put a quotation with a space marker write count space quotation comma so that's going to say it's going to show text marker write count but then I want to get the variable so I need to then tell it what variable which is marker write count right and then I usually at the end of that like to put the little colon uh, slash R which is like hitting a carriage return so I go down to the next level I, I think this is gonna be valuable because I want to be able to look at what that count is so it's just uh, and I probably want to spell print with an R in there as well so let me do a little build here and see what happens no errors that's a good sign Mind you, if you screwed something up, like if you'd, uh, I think if we do something like this, I think it'll it'll mess it up. Oh, it doesn't mind the, that's sad. If I misspell it, it'll for sure mess it up. Yeah, there we go. So like I've got steering misspelled. I've got it spelled as searing. And it says use of unde undeclared uh, identifier searing. It tells you what line, 37, what column. And I can kind of go down to line 37 and I can see, oh, it should say steering because I know up top my variable is called steering. Um, apparently, it doesn't give you a hard time about the uppercase, lowercase, which I was a little surprised on. All right, build. We're good. I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to uh, hit go. Oops. What's going on here? Save. Well, it's pro you know it's probably a good idea at this point. I'm going to call this ENGR uh, 2210 Lab03. I got a couple of these in the running right now, so I'm going to call it Lab03A. Close that out. Hit play. Boom! It stops. Waits five seconds. Oh, look what just happened here! I don't know if anybody noticed that. It waits five seconds, and it's just nudging forward. So what's happening? Hopefully what you can what you can discover is what's actually happening is when I get to this um, this spot of my code down here. Uh, let me reset this real quick. There we go. When I get to this spot on my code down here, where I'm saying if marker right is true, then stop, wait five seconds, and then go back to normal. The problem is it then goes back to your main loop and it gets back down to marker strips before you actually leave that strip, meaning it only nudges forward an inch and the strip is, you know, 16 inches long or something, right? Um, so it, it wasn't enough time 
for this thing to zero out. So what I might want to do is I might want to do a little wait in there of maybe a second just to ensure that um, it has sufficient time to leave that strip before it starts looking at the code again. So let's see here. So if I hit play this time, stops, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, and it goes. Because now it's had time, now it's, you can actually see down here in the, in the console, marker right count equals one. The left is not gonna do anything. You're gonna have to try to make that do something. Uh, marker right, oh, now I've actually solved too much of your problem for you here too. You've got a bad habit of doing that. Uh, oh, here's a problem though, marker right count equals two, right? So I'm not going to be able to uh, just go purely off of five unless I, you know, maybe say, well, I'm gonna, maybe I'll go off of 10 marker right counts to be considered five complete loops. And I'm fine with that. You know, you may have to do something like that. Um, but I think what you're seeing right now is you have enough to potentially start to build out what is this thing going to look like. Um, meaning I might now need to navigate into some other strategy where I would ask a question like, okay, if uh, marker right equals true, then stop. Uh, you know, um, then set command zero, okay. But I could also do something down here, and that's where I don't wanna give it away to you. Um, I've got my end if there, right? I could say if marker left, I'll give you a hint, equals true, and marker right count is equal to 10 or is greater than 10 because we'll probably get an 11th one on that next iteration then maybe i want to go into a instead of a stop maybe i want to go into a set steering command and drive a little bit at an angle trying to reacquire that other strip so I, i'm going to try not to give it away to you guys um what i will tell you is you've got enough if you just followed what's in the video here you know unfortunately you got enough to get probably 16 out of 20 this week um, my goal will be for you to try to uh, try to do a little bit more than that. You understand how the if-else statements work. And I think I just told you, you can do things like if marker left equals true, you know, and um, uh, marker right count. is greater than 10 you know then and i do some other things some other navigation strategies to go find that other that other deal and i might have to also then ask is the marker right true and do i need to stop for 10 seconds it's going to be it's pretty obvious that that's going to be the tough part this week right um, i essentially have given you enough to stop at each of the pick up and drop off locations what I have not given you enough to do is to visit that charging location. So I'll leave it up to you guys to figure out that part based upon this left-hand strip right here. All right, so with that, I'm gonna stop this real quick and just go over real quick in Canvas what you guys got going on. So uh, the intro video is right here, so make sure you watch the intro video. If you're watching this video, you've already watched the intro video, so I guess I don't need to tell you that. Um, then watch the uh, the marker strips video, which we're in right now, and then go into your homework slash lab. And in the homework lab, uh, we're actually going to be building this. This is where you can download the uh, mag loop track new. And again, this lab is intended to be a little more challenging. Goal is to get as much of the process working as possible. Do not give up. Have fun with it. Realize if I take points away, they're going to be minimal. Um, download the, the new track loop. Uh, download and answer the questions in the lab. Uh, so the questions in the lab for Micro Basic Lab 3. Uh, basically, you know, again, you can use the Micro Basic Scripting Manual. Uh, the video lectures that we've done up till this point talks a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, describe the physical difference between a marker and a navigation strip. We've mentioned that many times. Uh, complete the table. This is very similar to the table we did in the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, describe three AGV activities. I know I've talked about a bunch of them in this video. Uh, estimate the tape position. 
Uh, just another good activity to, to get a little more practice on estimating the tape position. Again, I'm not going to be real fussy. You know, if somebody calls B0 and somebody else calls it negative 3, they're both going to be correct. Um, lab activity, ensure you have the correct AGV profile. The new mag loop track new. Um, write the code necessary. And then here's what's going to happen. So code should include appropriate comments. So really the grading is what you're going to pay attention to. AGV must stop and wait five seconds at pickup and drop off locations. After the fifth complete loop, the AGV must visit the charging station for 10 seconds. After charging, the AGV should recommence standard pickup and drop off schedule. It is worth noting that I, it's allowable, completely allowable for the AGV to have that six load on board during charging. I'm not going to make you try to figure that out. I, I, I'm confident several of you could. A uh, deduction of two points will occur for any incorrect, misstop, turn, or navigation. Linear speed of the AGV should be at least 0.2 meters per second. Again, that can be found right up here. When you hit go, you'll see the linear speed right now is zero. If I wait five seconds, you'll see it'll go up. I think mine goes up to 0.21, and in the corners, it gets a little bit faster. All right, so the linear speed has to be at least 0.2 meters per second. And then either paste your completed code into this document or you can send me a separate notepad file. So if you want to just grab your code, you know, like this and uh, hit control C and then go into notepad. If that's easier for you, you can just paste it in here, save it, and you could then email me the notepad file and you could email me the lab and that would be sufficient. I know if a few of you, uh, as the code gets longer, it may not fit in this text box. A couple of you guys made the font real small, which is fine um, I, to make it fit in the text box because I'm just going to paste it into, into uh, the AGV sim anyway. So. so with that, I think we've got this all covered. You know, email me uh, the Word document and the program code before the due date, 20 points. And I'm, I'm throwing down the gauntlet to you, a little bit of a challenge for you guys. Um, but even if you don't get everything working, even if you just get what we did today, I think you'll be looking at 16 out of 20. Um, uh, and then if you can get the charging station and recycling the, the loop count and all that stuff, um, that's what it's going to take uh, to get the 20 out of 20. So have fun with this. And if you have any questions as usual, if there's any questions along the way, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you.